Okay, so this is related rates part two. I'm going to do two more word problems in here. So this one I have copied in here already. So we have a spherical balloon and it's inflated. So its volume is increasing at a rate of three feet cubed per minute. We want to know how fast the diameter of the balloon is increasing when the radius is one foot. So we could sketch the graph. Doesn't have to be a great sketch. Just remind us that it's three dimensionals. And we have a rate, and there's also a diameter in there somewhere. If you wanna do a different color. Okay, so we have a sketch. We write out our given rate. Our given rate, I see it right here, three feet cubed per minute. Again, a lot of times these units can help you figure out what variables to use. What's increasing? It's the volume, so, and that is definitely, volume is measured in cubic. So it's dv in terms of time, and it is increasing, so it is positive. It's given. We want to write our rate that we want to find. How fast is the diameter of the balloon increasing? And I don't want to change it to radius, okay? Um, I don't like to use x and y. I like to use the variable that describes it. So D for diameter. I'm not going to do DD. I already did a capital on my picture because I knew this was coming. So I want to do the derivative of the diameter in terms of T at a given time. What given time? When the radius is one foot. So when the radius is one foot. So find the derivative of the diameter in terms of T at the point when the radius is one foot. So now we want an equation that relates the variables. Our two variables are V and D. And we know we have a sphere and its volume. So let's go ahead and write out the volume of the sphere. But we do know it should be R to the third because it's volume. So here's an equation that relates volume and radius. But we need an equation, again, we can't take the derivative of both sides until we have V and D diameter. Okay, so we have a little bit of work to do to get an equation with those two variables that I need. Well, it's not too bad. What equation relates radius and diameter? Isn't two radii equal to one diameter? Yeah, we can see it over here. R plus R is the diameter. The radius is half. We can use that formula too. It doesn't matter. But what I do want to do is solve for r in terms of d. So I divide both sides by 2. And there's, you could have started off with that formula if you knew it. The diameter is half the radius. And so if I replace d over 2 with r, it looks like I'm going to get my equation that relates the two variables that I need, v and d. Again, our goal is we need equation with V and D only, nothing else. So that's why we're doing this. So the third power in R is D over two. If we wanna clean it up, we could, before we take the derivative of both sides. Two to the third is eight. Four goes into eight two times. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take the derivative of both sides. Again, it's always in terms of time in this chapter. There's no other derivative that we're taking except for in terms of time. It's a rate in terms of time. So we will be chain ruling it. Constant. So the derivative of d to the third is 3d squared. And then d dt of the inside. So again, we want to find dd dt. So we can isolate it. And then we can plug in at the instant all of our givens. Now you could plug in everything first and then solve it. That's fine. But if you do that, then you want to make sure we're saying a given r equals 1 first. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for it first. I don't think it's much different. This goes in there twice. So I'm going to times both sides by 2. Divide both sides by pi, and we can divide both sides by d squared. 
I have isolated. Now I can plug in. So now I could find this rate at the instant when the radius is one. It's one foot. Well, if we have a radius is one, what is the diameter? It looks like it's two. We also have DVDT given. DVDT, three feet cubed per minute. But when we divide, we were to put the units in here for the D squared, that would be feet squared pi, leave a feet. You don't need to put the units in, but in the end, you have to put the units in <laughs> if you want to do it at the end. I like to make sure personally that they work out, and I know I've done the problem correctly, at least have a sense of it. So now, again, approximate that. And it is an approximation. And again, just maybe double check. It's positive. It's increasing. Everything's increasing. So yeah, this that sounds like it's a good answer. Okay, my next example. It's a pretty popular one in all the books. It's about a water tank. It's actually a conical tank. Cone. Okay, so we have a conical tank that's vertex down. It's 10 feet across on the top and 12 feet deep. Water is flowing into the tank at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute. Find the rate of change of the water depth when it's at an instant, it's eight feet deep. So first let's draw the tank. Right circular cylinder. So if it's 10 feet across, I'm just gonna write that it's five feet radius. And 12 feet deep. So that goes. Okay, so let's go ahead and write the problem. The given, water is flowing into the tank at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute. So it's 10 cubic feet per minute. Did I give you a hint of what rate I should use? Cubic feet is measuring, right, volume, dv dt, okay? So yeah, that's our given rate, and cubic feet is feet cubed, so we're gonna use the volume. The water is filling it up, it's the volume that's being filled. So now let's write our rate that we wanna find. Find, there's the keywords, the rate of change of the water depth. Maybe we call this the height, and it is changing. So maybe this is the radius, and that's the height. So we're, the height is actually the depth, how high it is. The depth is the height. So we want to find the rate of change to the depth when it is 8 feet deep. So dh dt when it, meaning the height, is 8 feet. So you tell me what do we need a relationship to relate. So volume and height of the picture we have. So remember, volume in general is area of the base. This might help you come up with other formulas times the height. But that's if it's the same area top and bottom. This area is going to be one third. You can kind of see where that comes from. Looks like you have a cylinder, it's one third of it. Hopefully you can remember it that way. Pi r squared is my base to circle, right? times my height. There we go. So now I want us to be super careful because we, I've already pointed this out, we need a formula to relate h and v. We do have a formula relating h and v, but if we took the derivative of both sides, the radius is changing too. You can see it changes up and down. If we took the derivative, the derivative of both sides right now, you'd have to use the product rule because this is a product of two variables, and then we'd have dr dt and dh dt and dv dt. We're, we don't have dr dt given, so we can't take the derivative now. Our goal 
is to have an equation that relates these two variables and only those two variables. Then you can take the deriv derivative of both sides, okay? So we have some work cut out. We need to basically get r in terms of h somehow in order to substitute it so that we can just have volume and height alone. So now we need to relate, let's write it out, r and h in order to make this happen. Okay, we'll solve, since we want it in terms of h, we'll solve for it in terms of r, and then we'll plug it in. So how are we gonna do that? Here's a triangle, this angle's the same, and then we have a big triangle here. Right, we're gonna use similar triangles. Okay, you see how we have the big r, the big h, and here's the little r, the little h. They are similar because they have all the same angles because they're embedded like that. And you can, as long as you do it in the same order, we can use little r is to big R, 5, as little h is to big H, 12. And then cross multiply. And like I said, we want it in terms of h, so we need to get rid of r, so we isolate r, divide by 12. And now we can substitute in for r. Instead of r, we write that. It is r squared times h. See that? But instead of r, it's 5 twelfths times h. Substitute that in for r. Simplify it before we take the derivative, because otherwise you're going to have to do the product rule again. You don't want to do the product rule here. It's not necessary. And again, combine the h's. I can actually bring these constants out in the front too. It's 25, 3 times 144. Okay, yeah, so simplify it as much as you can so you don't mess up on the derivative. Now we're going to take the derivative of both sides in terms of t. So I'm just copying it now and then I'll take the derivative. So this is d. Bring the constants in the front. Derivative of h to the third is 3h squared times the chain rule, dh dt. Okay, which one are we looking for? We want dh dt, so we've got to isolate it. Maybe we want to simplify it first. Just flip-flopping the sides. So solve for dh dt. I'm dividing by all this stuff, except multiplying by 144. Flipping it, basically. This gets divided on both sides. The pi gets divided on both sides. H squared gets divided on both sides. We're isolating dh dt. I just put it over here. Now we can find, we want to find dh dt at the given instant of when h is 8 feet. We plug in dv dt. I think we're given dv dt. It's 10 feet cubed per minute. And we need h squared. So we do, oh, h is 8 feet, it's right there. So that's 8 squared, feet squared. You can see the feet squared cancels. And it worked out, my unit worked out to feet per minute. And then we gotta do all this, just pull out your calculator maybe. Be careful dividing by all of these, you gotta do them each separately. Or maybe I'll simplify it first and then use my calculator. So this does reduce. You can do the work on your own. Practice your algebra. But we also need to approximate it. So there's our answer. Okay, that's it for today. Have a good day.